In this unit, we are going to study mining and aggregating patterns over multiple trajectories. When we study spatial and temporal patterns, an important pattern is trajectory pattern. That means you look at the points, the objects, they moving along the spatial, you know, in the in the spatial map, along with time. So we call these are the trajectories. What do we want to find the trajectory patterns. One interesting trajectory pattern mining method called partition-based trajectory pattern mining. Uh, they are mining T patterns. T means trajectory. This is a work done by a group of Italian researchers. They published in KDD 2007 called trajectory pattern mining. Their mining method uh, essentially, it's really good on study like uh, busy traffic in a city. You can think a city can be partitioned into equal width grids to obtain regions of interest. For example, one grid may represent the museum, the other grid may represent a railway or campus. Okay. Then, when you study the, the busy traffic, they go along the route you will be able to find uh, at what hours or how much time you will find a very busy traffic and you, how long it may take to reach the other side. Okay. So what we can do is we can transform each input trajectory into a, a time annotated symbolic sequence. For example, you may transform one location is a railway station, another location is Castle Square, the third location could be museum. And based on the time, you may say uh, from the railway station, it takes about 15 minutes to reach Castle Square, then it takes two hours and 15 minutes to reach museum. And we can use a constraint based a sequential pattern mining because each grid is matched into a symbolic sequence. So the finally, you can use the symbolic sequence to represent the whole trajectory and try to find trajectory pattern is trying to use constraint based sequential pattern mining. The constraints can be the range of time delay. And then the constraint-based sequential pattern mining results can be mapped onto the map to show you know how much time it may take from one location going to the other location. That's that kind of matching T pattern will be something like x0, y0. After alpha time delay, you will reach x1, y1 points. This will go will you know get into uh, explicit representation of the patterns. Then another interesting study, a group of studies, are detecting moving object clusters. That means you may think uh, trucks, you may think animals, they are moving together. Uh, you may want to find their moving object clusters in this sense. Okay. The first one definition is flock. Both flock and convoy require k consecutive timestamp in order to find patterns. The flock essentially is they require at least m entities are within the circular region of radius r, and they are moving together in the same direction. Then we call these are the flock pattern. Okay. Then, to, uh, but the flock pattern is a little too rigid in the sense. They require at least m entities uh, moving in k consecutive timestamps, and it's within their movement are within the circular region of radius r, their relative distances. Okay. And sometimes this radius r is too rigid. Then convoy definition is using density-based clustering. They don't have to be within radius R. They can be tighter or they can be a little looser. As long as they form a density-based clustering, you will be able to find those M entities. And in the K consecutive timestamps, they move together. You can think they are convoy patterns. However, such movement constraints 
are still very rigid in the sense both require k consecutive time steps. Uh, we may think like animal moments, a certain time stamp, the animal may not be so closely clustered together. They may spread around to graze or to do other things. In that sense, we may relax this k consecutive time stamps to allow at certain time stamps, they probably are quite far apart. But on the other timestamps, you will be able to find they are very closely moving together. Okay. In that sense, we define such pattern as swarm. Swarm means the moving objects may not need to be close together all the consecutive timestamps. Okay. Of course, to find such movement pattern, you it, it may be it will be more costly than finding flocks and convoys because the pattern is more relaxed. Uh, some efficient algorithm has been developed to mine such pattern. The 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 paper was published in VRDB 2010. Now we look at another trajectory pattern is doing clustering try to find them. We call trajectory clustering. This could be useful in, for example, try to find land, uh, try to forecast hurricane landfall. If you overlay many years hurricane together, you may find they may form very close clusters. However, if you try to take the whole hurricane pass as inseparable, you will not be able to find such patterns just because uh, the, at certain points of time, these hurricanes may overlay nicely, but at other time, they may become more spreading uh, because they were, you know, influenced by different uh, flow of the air. Okay. So, try to find such patterns. We will propose a partitioning and a grouping approach. Partitioning means you first chop these trajectories in, for each trajectory, you chop them into a sequence of segments. Okay. Then after chopping these into sequence of segments, you will be able to find for certain fragments, they may form, they are moving in the same direction, they may form nice patterns, you can group them together as trajectory clusters. Then, how we can find nicely find such patterns? For partitioning, uh, you can use minimum description length principle called MDL. Okay. The MDL, the general philosophy, is you try to use minimum number of points, but maximally reflect the trajectory, the real trajectory paths. That means instead of thinking you use many, many small fragments, which are too costly, you try to use less of them, but you don't want to use too few because you will, uh, you know, distort the picture. You, you, you will try to maximally approximate the real trajectory pass. Okay. In that sense, you may say I use minimum description length principle uh, when the trajectory started turning in the sharper angle, I will try to say this should be a separate point. Then you may find smaller number of fragments, but maximum, you know, preserve the shape of the trajectory. So this is an interesting algorithm published in Sigma 2007 called trajectory clustering, a partition and a group framework.